Right, welcome to this complete army video for the Tyrians. It's High Fleet Leviathan, 2,000 points. In this video, it'll be a showcase, a chance to see some of the models and an explanation of the list. So unit choices uh, and how the whole army works together and the overall sort of battle plan uh, for this tyranny force. It's been a very enjoyable period to collect these. Uh, it's been a quick painting method. You'll see some of the models up close in just a moment. Uh, using the what I've called the enhanced contrast method. It's worked out really well. I've got the army done in less than a year. Uh, so it's really been a great bonus for the channel uh, to have this Tyranny Force. I have red Tyranids, but I've gone for a Tyranid army with High Fleet Leviathan, which is a colour scheme I've always liked ever since I got into 40k. Uh, and then how easy it is with contrast paints has really opened up the way uh, for me to collect my own High Fleet Leviathan Force. So it means I've gone for a Tyranid army that's entirely different to the, the red uh, army that I have. I've chosen different units, different tactics, different style. And so now we've got two completely contrasting uh, Tyrion High Fleets on the channel. So I'll show you this model here. This is the, the famous Screamer Killer re-sculpt for the Leviathan box set. If you like the look of this model, it's been done using the what I've called the Enhanced Contrast Method. So you can see the gentle sort of pink colours coming from the, the limbs there. 90% contrast is in the two paint tutorials. I'll show you the extra ways just to enhance the model as well. There is a paint tutorial for this actual model on the channel. So the Screamer Killer. In that video, it's a bit longer, but I'll show you how to do the basing. All the details that you see there. So if you like the look of the basing, you want to copy that. That's covered in that video. I've also got a video for the Tyranny Prime. So if you like the look of him, you can follow that one, medium size model. And then for an even quicker tutorial, uh, one of the basic termagants. All using the same method. So I'll show you that method. It's the same one in all three of those videos. And you can use it for any of the Tyrion units, big or small. And you're looking at a model like this. About three hours will pretty much get it down. Now for painting a model this size, that's pretty good. So it's nice and quick. And then you, for the smaller models, you're looking at about 25, 30 minutes from start to finish. So if you like the outcome there, then do make use of those painting tutorials. So as you watch this video, you might feel inspired to expand your Tyranny collection or indeed get into collecting Tyranny. This video hopefully is helpful for people that are thinking of collecting Tyranny themselves. For discount 40K, use the link below for the outpost. They do Warhammer 40,000, but at a discounted rate, usually 20% off or more uh, from your 40K stuff. And that's paints and accessories, models, into Age of Sigma and the other systems as well. And then also other uh, gaming systems that are out there as well. It's a vast store there with the Outpost. Uh, great service from there. They ship across the UK, most of the European Union as well. And if your order's big enough, you can get free postage on uh, your orders as well. When you use that link, it really does help support the channel here as well. So for the Tyranids, quite a big celebration really on the channel. New models, new codex, and so it's about the right time to to share this completed army and I'm happy enough it's it's done progressively it's done better and better on the channel it's improved uh, which is really good news it's nothing worse than your army just keeps getting smashed apart but they're giving a good account of themselves on the battlefield so I think I'll go in order I don't want to spend too long on this one it's to be quite a concise video and then you should see either released already or, or will come out soon is specific videos for specific units. My favorite combinations, I'm gonna do those as tactics videos, so you can uh, get the real lowdown on my favorite combinations uh, for this list. This one, this video really is mainly sort of a list building video just to show you the, uh, the list and build it up quick enough uh, and briefly just give you an introduction uh, for the unit choices and strategy. A great chance to immerse yourself in the Tyranid hive mind. James will not be watching this. We're all <laughs> we're safe from him in this video. So we'll start with uh, the uh, Hive Tyrant. So there he is, one of my favourite results there with the painting method. And the plastic sculpt from Gage's Workshop is amazingly good. So he's called Typhon. The Butcher of the 18th. So he hunts man flesh. Especially James' Astromilla Tyrum, and I've, you've got one of the iconic casualty markers, the metal one, metal sculpt, and I've put him there as a bit of a trophy. Gravely wounded and no hope of escape. Let that be a warning to you, James. So that's <laughs> the Hive Tyrant. 
uh, just in there. There's lots of reasons for taking him. I've, I've, I've done a tactical video on him. Uh, he comes in at 235, so he's worth protecting. He's there to be in the heart of the army, the heartbeat of the army. Uh, he's to push up, not to lead necessarily right from the very front, but he's there to push forwards uh, through and take on the middle of the table, the tougher targets the opponent has, and to guide and bless the rest of uh, the tyranny force as it pushes forwards. He can give all their weapons assault within six inches. Units, uh, they can push up and advance and move quickly up the table if they need to. He can fight a bit in close combat. Not too bad. Uh, with the monstrous bone sword and lash whip, which is twin linked. Twos to hit, six attacks, strength nine, minus two and three damage. It's not too bad. He can grind away and chop away at stuff and do quite well. And then he's also, you can, I take the strangle form cannon. He's, I've geared him up for shooting at infantry. Which would be D6 plus one, two, twos to hit, D6 plus one shots, strength seven minus one, two damage. So I'd say he's amazing, amazing, but he's he's all right and he can shoot and chop away quite happily. Um, and then he's good for po saving points on uh, stratagems. Friendly unit once per turn. That's once per turn. So that's your turn, the opponent's turn, your turn, the opponent's turn. You're able to get. Uh, a stratagem, and I think it's got to be a battle tactic one now, but that still opens up the way for a good number. But you get it for zero CP, so you can save yourself on CP and you get some extra stratagems in the game uh, as well. I run this whole army, by the way, is run as uh, invasion fleet, so I can tap into a choice before the game begins of either sustained hits against infantry, so any sixes to hit for shooting and close combat pops an extra hit against infantry, uh, or I can go for Lethal hits against monsters and vehicles, so six is to hit auto wound. And there's also the option to go for precision hits as well, which I've, I've never taken. But if you really need to go after characters, you can get a bit of help with that as well. I think he's quite vulnerable on the table by himself. He's tough, but if he's hit by multiple like last cannons, you could bring him down. So to give him a level of protection, I add some tyrant guard to him. You can go squad to six. I just take three. So we'll bring those in. One, two, and three. Opponent's now got to get through this wall of flesh to get to him. It looks very cool on the table. They'll give you four wounds each. Toughness eight, three up save. So I won't turn to them here, but I, I, I go more in depth in the tactics videos, but they're just act as a bodyguard. And they're not that great in close combat. They're just there for just a heap of flesh for the opponent to try and get through. And I was going to say something about a stratagem with these, which I end up using a lot, is Rapid Regeneration. It's only a CP. Sometimes you get it for nothing, because it's a battle tactic stratagem. So you can play it using his ability for free. Uh, it gives everybody a 5 plus feel no pain. So it makes it even harder for your opponent to try and get through those. Uh, and then I give him an enhancement as well. It's 25 points for... Uh, adaptive biology so that will give him a built-in 5 plus feel no pain so you don't have to keep using the stress you might not have stress available you might have already used his ability so you just give him a built-in 5 plus feel no pain if he starts the turn with less than his number of wounds it goes to 4 plus feel no pain so we're really trying to make him hard to kill so the opponent uses a lot of effort to bring him down so that's the hive turret so if my tyranid army the overall so I've got a, nice, a hardcore solid type unit as the heartbeat of the army at the moment. He's there, he's the commander of the force. But what's the rest of the army? What's the plan? So I found that Tyranids can be low impact. So the full on charge across the board, blow the opponent away, uh, it's, it's very thematic. But I think Tyranids can struggle. They're not, they're not the toughest army out there. The opponent can, there's enough guns out there that can really harm your stuff on the board. So this army, and I wanted to do something a bit different to the Reds. So this army's gone down more down the route of more cunning. An infiltrator uh, that type star, and it's the invasion fleet detachment anyway. So it's like the initial vanguard of a, an invasion taking place, as opposed to like a, a brutal stampede. Uh, this is more of a cunning uh, approach. So it really fits with him, like the hive mind's adapting itself and just playing the more strategic role. So you're not going to expect my army just to rush straight at you. It's not going to play it that way. The main aim for my army to try and win a game is to harvest points and to harvest more points to the opponent, in which case you win. And also to distract and tie up the opponent 
and try and hamper their efforts to try and pick up points as well. So stop the opponent from picking up points and then just rush to try and pick up as many points as possible. So if you check out the battle reports with this force, you'll see them moving out to harvest points, which is usually the middle of the battlefield to get those mid-range no man's land objectives to harvest the points coming in as efficiently as possible and then just to tie the opponent up and I might lose out on combats and many battles taking place across the board but if I've held the opponent up and distracted them whilst I've been able to rake in the points then I can go on to win the game and so it's, it's an interesting way of using them uh, but it's proved to be effective enough uh, they're progressively doing better uh, it's been a fun way to play the tournament it's a little bit different to the usual approach so bear that in mind I'm looking for units to hold objectives contest the middle ground distract and tie up the opponent so and at the same time you've still got sort of a hardcore element to it because you're going to need some kind of resolute chunk of your army to withstand shooting in close combat so that's a, I've got to start over a rock here in the middle as I'll go through yeah, all right, we'll do it as they come here in the book. So, uh, Winged Tyranny Prime. I don't think he's a particularly popular choice, but I run him and really explain how he's used in, again, one of the tactics videos. I'll, I'll cover it a bit here, but I'll put him there by himself for now. We'll come back to him later on. Uh, next is the Neuro Tyrant. And there's a tactics video on him as well, but there he is. I run him with Neuro Gaunts. There's his two nodes. He has, and he comes with these little neuro gaunts. You get a squad of 11. These will act as his bodyguard, like so. This is my well, this is one of the units for the middle of the board, grabbing a no man's land objective. So there's durability here, he's tough enough, and you've got to get through all of this chaff, this fluff, to get through to him. If you don't get through all of them, I can use a CP to regenerate some more back onto the board. So he's there to move out into the middle of the table. He's no good in close combat, uh, but he's there to be a sentinel on top of a no man's land objective or just to support the army as it pushes forwards. And he can support them with decent firepower. The Psychic Scream is 2d6 auto hits. It's a torrent weapon ignoring cover, range 18, strength 5, minus 1, 2 damage. So you can just spurt onto a target like Primaris Marines. No cover allowed, minus 1, 2 damage. Just bring models down. And then the great thing about torrent is you can use it on Overwatch. So the opponent moves or, or charges, I can overwatch with him as well. So he just moves out, grab an objective, sit on it, shoot and overwatch targets as they get close enough. And so far it's worked out alright, it's not my, not my best unit. So we've got 235, which is expensive, really want to keep him alive. Plus 25 for his adaption, 95 for those, 45 for the little gaunts, very cheap. And then 105 for the Neuro Tyrant. So I've now got a rock and a pebble, <laughs> a little stone to, to move out to the middle of the board. Uh, and the prime, which we'll, we'll come back to. Then, none of these. Yeah, we're well just in the order that they come. Termigants. So these are for, I'll put them down here. These are for lurking on the board. I take two squads of 10. They are 60 points. So this is a cheap cannon fodder. I'm not expecting them to do very much at all. I'm expecting them just to sit out on objectives and just to hide away. So cheap unit to sell on objectives. To lend a little bit of firepower support if, if needed. But I don't really rely upon them for anything. There's one unit there. I'll put the other one here. There's 10 wounds the opponents try and get through. Again, they're endless swarms. If the opponent doesn't destroy them, I can regenerate D3 plus 3 back for a CP for invasion fleet. Their firepower's okay. Uh, for these, I do give them... There we go. We're bulking the army out just with some soft stuff for menial tasks, grabbing objectives, helping fulfill secondaries and so on, whilst the rest of the army's uh, working hard across the board. I do give them... You can take a strangle web. Same range as the Flesh Borers, but it's an assault weapon with devastating wounds and torrents. You can pick up cheeky wounds coming through with that. Sixes to wound, 
you know, D6 auto hits. I, I found that a couple of them spread around. You can start nipping away wounds against any kind of target. So uh, that's pretty useful enough. But they're just a bit of cannon fodder just to block out the, the army and to use for menial tasks like holding objectives and so on. I've gone for two squads of 10 just for flexibility so I can place them in different areas on the board. I can use it for screening duty, blocking out deep strikers and so on. So simple tasks for the Termigants. Right, yeah, Tyranny of Warriors then. So we'll we'll zoom out later on so you can get a, a look at the whole footprint of the army. Love Tyranny of Warriors, especially I think it's Space Marine 2, the computer game, the uh, the scene of those fighting against the Ultramarines. It's so, so good. I love the Warriors, the way they're animated in that. I actually posed one of them to match him with the, the trailer as close as I could, so put him on a higher rock. So just cut them back a little bit, the arms, and stuck them on. Just with that pose of the arms opened out like that. It's very cool. So he's in. Squad of six for the Warriors. Can something like that. So they go with the Prime. They'll be on foot. And they usually hang around at, with the heartbeat of the army with the Hive Tyrant. So they'll be the Hive Tyrant. He'll send in his Warrior squad uh, when required. So they'll usually be hanging around together. Uh, I've done a tactics video on these. Do check it out. I think the potency of these is really, really good. If you can time it right, get it right, these can take on any target on the board and be dangerous enough. But to see the full, I'm not going to go into it here, but to check out the, the full explanation of that, which is a whole stack of abilities on top of each other, can be really, really uh, effective. So do check out that video because it will take a little while to explain how that works. Warriors can be effective enough. Melee bioweapons with these, they get six attacks each. They can reroll their ones. Their swords are coming in at strength five, but minus two, which is great. One damage, but just so many attacks uh, coming in. And uh, they're twin linked, so you reroll on your wounds, which is so, so good. And then with him, you'll grant them lethals. Uh, for my high fleet, lethals against vehicles, uh, it gives them sustained. Sorry, no, he doesn't give them lethals. As uh, my high fleet can give me lethals against vehicles or sustained hits against infantry. He grants the unit sustained hits just all round, so uh, six is popping extra hits, which is great as a stratagem to further enhance that as well. But do check that out. But these, this is my chopping unit, and you'll often see them hanging around with him, and they're sent in as usually a follow up unit. So they're not at the very, very front because they'll be shot away. You know, their toughness five, three wounds. Four up save, no invun, so they are they are vulnerable. I don't want to lose their number, I want to keep them at the highest hitting power possible. So they will often be tucked in reserve, hidden away. Reserve as in held back on the board, and I use them to follow up uh, later on as a chopping unit. And chop they can, if they can preserve their numbers and, and get that charge in, they can chop effectively against any target that's out there. So I really rate them and love having them in the army. May not be the most popular choice, but I think if you run them well, that can be a, a very potent tiered unit. So bulking out the army quite well. They've got a, a middle chunk now that's quite strong. The main central loins of the of the army here, uh, and then we've got some menial task units and a, another middle ground type unit. But I've said that. I'm not going for the full-on charge, so how are we going to get to grips with the opponent? How are we going to tie them up? How are we going to distract them? So this is some of the units coming in in just a moment. Uh, there's a tactical choice here, so Biovores. That's the Tyranid Artillery. It's the new sculpt from Games Workshop. I actually prefer the previous plastic Pyrovore models from Games Workshop, but these are okay. A a squad of, uh, well, it's three of them in individual squads of one. Uh, I could merge them into a squad of three, but if they're in ones, I can spread them out, put them in different places on the board. There's not just one place where my artillery is that the opponent could go after them. Uh, or I could do a squad of two and a squad of one, perhaps, something like that. So those are in. I've done a tactics video on those as well. They're to provide firepower support, and also you can use them for grabbing... Uh, objectives. They can generate a spore mines and you can use them to grab objectives. Uh, no Man's Land 
behind enemy lines. You can help fulfill secondaries. You can use them to harvest points. They're a points harvesting type. You can explain it further in the video uh, how that can be done. So you can check out the uh, tactics video for the biovores. So those are in. So now we've got artillery support, we've got a nice chunky heart of the army, we've got some menial task type units, they've all got their own roles, we've got an objective grabbing unit as well. So what next? Uh, just in the order it comes in the codex, it doesn't really matter. So we've got Death Leaper. So now we're on to... Uh, uh, this is the, the, the most fun part of the army for me, and that's my infiltrator type units. These beautiful, glorious sculpts from Games Workshop. This is the character Lictor. He's utterly huge. Huge tyranny warrior. Look, there's a tyranny warrior. <laughs> He's so much, so much bigger, and a brilliant, brilliant sculpt from Games Workshop. Massive fan of this model. Again, it took me about two or three hours to paint him using the enhanced contrast method. Really happy with how he came out. So super happy with him. He's in the list. Just say, for example, I'm just going to show you. you. See the, see all this claw work here. This is all just contrast straight on. You see the nice blended red effect on the claws? That's just contrast. No painting, it's just contrast paints, just blending them together a little bit. So the process is very, very quick. So check out those tutorials for that. But he's in. So with Death Leaper and the other units that you'll see, I've got a Vanguard part of the army. Part of the army that's going to infiltrate right up into the board and grab, again, grab objectives early on, but also charge into units and tie them up. Charge into stuff very quickly in the game, tie them up, hold them back, stop them from moving out and grabbing objectives whilst the rest of my army pushes forwards. So Death Leaper, uh, you know, you're getting six attacks in close combat, two hit, strength seven minus two, two damage. The great thing about these is they're precision attacks, so you can really try and root characters out of units, like assassinate them as you allocate the damage onto specific models. Uh, he's got seven wounds, he's got three up save, four up invulnerable saves, toughness six, and it's quite tough to kill him. Eight inch moves, quite quick. He's got stealth, he can infiltrate in, and he's got lone operatives. So you've got to be within 12 to even shoot him as well. So there's lots going on with the Death Leaper, uh, and he is cheap at 70 points. Yeah, 70 points for such an intimidating model. I've done a, I've done a I've done a tactics video on him as well. Just the combination, the way they work. It, I, so this video has been really bloated. Uh, I've spread it out so you can pick and choose which tactics videos you want to delve into, uh, just to get more depth and more out of uh, the uh, Tyrion's Codex and units that are available. Uh, Biovores, by the way, seventy five points each. If I didn't mention that already, so two hundred and twenty five points. It's expensive for uh, the three of those. But uh, Death Leaper is in. And I've had great fun sending him on assassination attempts against enemy units. Uh, models like lieutenants, um, chaplains, sort of medium, uh, more vulnerable type characters, no matter how buried they are inside units, Death Leaper can root them out. So it's been great fun doing that. And uh, he's quite durable. He can tank a fair bit of uh, strike back in close combat. So there's so many units to skip. I think it's been a good move to go for two different style tyranny armies. So we come along to the Lictor. Again, re-sculpt from Games Workshop, massive model. Beautiful sculpt here. And I'm not sure, I didn't realise until I opened the box. With the kit, which is an exorbitant cost, but with that kit comes three options. There's this one, which is my favourite pose. There's another one with the blades, the, the claws are down, he's more curled up. There's another one where he's squatted down, about to pounce, a third pose, which looks fantastic. So you can get three different poses out of one box. Again, the cost is ridiculous, but what can help with that is your, if you can get discount 40k, so that's the outpost, 20% uh, off. So if I remember rightly, 30 pounds of games workshop, this one model, which is insane. Outpost, they do it for 24, it just knocks the cost of it down a bit for you. Beautiful, beautiful model. The Lictor's in to do the same work, either with Death Leaper to work together to really try and root characters out, or just to go somewhere else across the board. The other great thing about these is to sit them on objectives. They've got a lone operative, so the opponent's got to get within 12 to try and flush them out. So they're, they're, gonna be, they're just going to disqualify most of the opponent's firepower. And that's great if you're trying to hold on to objective. The opponent just, just can't shoot at them. And so that's great to have that. 
so the lictors in a useful unit it takes a bit of practice i think for using them check out the tactics video to show all the different ways that can be used on the battlefield so to further reinforce my my block that's going to push forwards to do traditional tyranny of fighting you know just crunching away i've got the mouse scepter so now i've got a monster in the list this thing here the licks by the way for all that you get big model very intimidating 60 points very very cheap uh, the licks by the way roughly striking the same as death leaper still on six attacks coming in uh AP minus two two damage precision really really good oh and something else um let me turn to it uh, if you if either of these two kill an enemy character which is great fun doing you gain a cp and CP is so useful. She actually can harvest command points as well as victory points. So there's the mouse scepter. Great fun painting in his big psychic brain. Can you imagine this monster? This is uh, Typhon's pet. <laughs> he just you know, lets, lets loose on the, the reins of this thing. And it just goes thundering across the board. So I'll tuck him in just there. His impact is okay. As... The main role for this thing seems to be a, a bullet magnet that the opponent just spends a lot of time trying to bring this thing down. It's intimidating on the board and invests a lot of effort to try and destroy it. And there's a fair bit to try and get through. It's toughness 11, which is really good toughness. 14 wounds, which is great. 3 up save. 4 plus a vulnerable save built into this thing. So it's going to tank a lot of damage coming through. Which is fine. If they're shooting at that, they're not firing other stuff such as the warriors. So often you'll see the warriors tucked away, hidden, the opponent's firing into the mouse scepter. And that's fine by me. I'd rather it that way around uh, than have my warriors being blown away uh, by firepower coming in. It's got OC of four. Uh, his most dangerous aspect is actually the shooting, psychic overloads. It's a blast weapon, range 18. Uh, his ability means the units can advance and count as assault. So often he'll be next to them. He doesn't have assault, but if he's near him, if he advances, he can still shoot with his shooting weapons. So There's quite a crucial symbiosis going on there. D6 plus three shots plus blast. So, you know, could potentially be getting 10, 11 shots coming through. Threes to hit. And then if you do get those hits, it's strength 10, minus 2, and 3 damage. So a real sort of medium-heavy infantry killer. And can cause trouble for other tougher targets as well. In close combat, it's not too scary. Just the three attacks with strike. Threes to hit, strength 9, minus 2, d6 plus 1 damage. And you can sweep as well for six attacks, and then three, strength 7, minus 1, 2 damage. He does have a damage bracket. And it's a bit harder to cause wounds within range, but that rule rarely comes up. Yeah, it's just a little bit. Minus one to hit rolls or minus one for the wound roll if the enemy unit is below half strength. And it's a rule that can easily be forgotten, sadly. But the mouse scepter, bullet magnet, firepower support, and a bit more toughness to add to the core, the, the central sort of heartbeat of the army. Yeah, you know, like the opponent shooting at that, they're not shooting my other stuff that's out harvesting points. I'm harvesting, getting all these points coming in, and you throw a mouse up to the opponent. Right, I've got to bring the mouse up to down. They're firing at it, and it won't die. Whilst I'm just raking the points in, is the idea. Skipping all of these, are such nice units here. The Morlock would look great painted up this color scheme, but I have that for the, the Red Army. Right, Screamer Killers. I've done a, a video on this one because it really does need explaining. So I've got two Screamer Killer models. One and two, which I've posed differently. Explain that in the tactics video. Traditional way of using these, just run them at the opponent. What's the problem with that is the opponent just shoots them to pieces as they stride across the board. So I use these by a unique way, drop podding them in with the Tyrannocyte. So Tyranny drop pod, land on the board, and then the Screamer Killer can disembark. And so check out the tactics video for that because there's there's effective ways that that can be done but there's two tyrannocytes to go into the list they look great on the board these massive towering strange tentacle eggs and the tyrannocyte can move shoot fight in close combat so it's not like a normal drop pod that just sits there it can do stuff on the table as well i think it's oc2 Screamer Killer's OC3, so you get a bit of fight for objectives. So the opponent's pushing forwards, so they're trying to break around on the flank somewhere, or they're driving through the middle. I'll watch the, 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 the way the game's going, and then I'll just drop pod in uh, with those Screamer Killers to plug gaps, cause distractions, to catch the opponent off guard. And it's the aces in your pocket. You know, you choose when you reveal them, you place them where you want them to land, 
instead of just the opponent knows where they are on the table, they push up the board, everything's guns are all lined up ready to destroy them, it's just too predictable. The opponent's able to bring them down, but instead I use them sort of an ambush approach, which has proved again good fun and much more effective. Tyrannocyte, let's give you an update on the points we've got here. Mass set to is 170, it's not too bad. Uh, the Scream Killers are all 170 as well. So I want to try and get good value out of these. So, you know, paid enough points for them. And the Tyrannocytes are 105 each. So it's, you know, I've got plenty of monsters here and good points being spent. So that's much of the army. So I've got a core, some real distraction Screamer Killers. And then I've got soft stuff, anchoring and harvesting objectives, middle ground units with the Warriors and... Uh, with the uh, Neuro Tyrant and the Vanguard units as, as well here to disrupt and tie up uh, units, hold objectives and so on. Yeah, towards the end here, V for Von Ryan's Leapers. This is the last unit to add. Massive fan of these. They're not quite Lictors, they're kind of big Hormigaunts. Get some focus, there they are. Beautiful, beautiful models. So I take a squad of six. I'll put them here. Squad of six of those. And this is to join the vanguard. And they're there as an opportunistic unit. And to tie up the opponent as much as possible. And I expect them to destroy stuff. They're a bane for hordes. You know, they'll slaughter a hordes type unit. Chaos cultists, they'll just cut their way through those. Effectively enough, they'll struggle against most other targets. They'll chip wounds away, but they'll struggle. Uh, they're infiltrators so against another unit. I can just infiltrate up the board. Uh, they're very, very quick. They're 10 inch move. So I can infiltrate them in just over 9 inches away from the opponent, or even 10, 11 inches back, and then just bounce up to 10 inches and then just jump on something straight away. Try and tie up a vehicle or some unit that's looking to push forwards onto an objective early on. So you can use them very much in an ambush sort of style. And then once they're in there and they're fighting away, the opponent's got to get through a four up save, a six up in one, toughness five, three wounds each. There's loads, there's 18 wounds the opponent's trying to get through. I can put a feel no pain of five plus on them with a stratagem. So all of those things uh, are useful enough with those. In close combat, you can plaster the opponent with lots of hits. Six attacks, three hits, strength five, minus one, and one damage. I don't expect much from them, but I can use them to distract, tie up, uh, for the overall game plan of just harvesting points. So when you see this army on the battlefield, and we'll, ste we'll step back in a moment and look at the whole footprint, you're looking for an army that's going to quite boldly push out to the middle of the board and spread out across all the objectives and all the middle ground and hold their own line. And then use some vanguard type units to immediately get stuck in and tie units up. And then when the opponent tries to push somewhere, uh, then I've got my Screamer Killer units that I can drop in to plug gaps and keep the opponent held back or completely distract them, drop them down behind enemy lines and just have screamer killers <laughs> on the rampage to distract the opponent away from the overall game plan. And the plan all being well, I know I'm not as tough as other armies, I don't have as much firepower, I'm not as good in close combat as well. So there's all those things where the moment too many players are saying, well, we're just not that, not as good as other factions. But play the harvesting approach, harvest points uh, with the advantages of units that can infiltrate in, push up the ball quickly. Uh, distract the opponent and so on, use cunning and just rake in those victory points and that I think can give you a good chance of outmaneuvering uh, and outpointing the opposing force. So I hope that's a help. You can see the, the, the army in action but now there's been an explanation as to the reasons for the unit choices on the board. If you like these kind of videos, I do an army development video series. That's where you see a proposed list just as it's fresh like from my mind, my new list ideas. And then I put those up on YouTube channel membership in the Army Development Video Series. And then we, you get a chance to interact, leave your own comments and suggestions, and you can help shape and change lists. And then we work on them, develop the armies, and then bring them out onto YouTube. And so it's been a very uh, good series. It's run for a good while. But if you like, like these kind of videos, then do check that out on YouTube channel membership. You can join us uh, for the exclusive content, including battle reports, and over on membership as well. We'll zoom out and take a look at the footprint. All right, so that's the footprint of the army, how it looks. It's a nice spread of units. I do like armies that have plenty of variety. So we've got a real good spread of different, a real celebration of different types of units. Good representation of the new stuff, the new sculpts from Games Workshop as well for the Leviathan box uh, and the other models that have come out since. So there's my little Vanguard 
selection of units across here. Von Ryan's Leapers, Lichter, and Death Leaper. I'd love to expand that. A real going to a bigger sort of Vanguard element, perhaps even a full-on army of Vanguard type units for the Tyrants. I don't know, but I just I really enjoyed using them. Uh, so that's my infiltrator tying up the opponent type units across there. Then my menial task, just handy little units for sitting on objectives, fulfilling secondaries of the two units of Gaunts. Artillery support across there with the biovores. Then the, the, the core solid part of the army in the middle, the, the hive tyrant in charge with his bodyguard. Uh, my follow-up unit warriors for chopping up targets. Middle ground objective holding Neuro tyrant with his bodyguard. The mouse scepter to add a bit more beef to the list as well. And then my rapid reaction Carnifex is here, the Screamer Killers, to arrive by deep strike with their drop pods. So real distract, distraction type units and ambush type units as well uh, for the opponent to try and deal with and to just to keep one eye in the sky watching out for those as they come down on the board. Now there's other armies that are out there that are tougher than this army. There's other armies that can unleash more dangerous firepower and better in close combat as well. But I'm trying to go down the route of harvesting points. So infiltrating in, pushing up boldly to the middle of the board, uh, may not win all my close combats and may get outgunned and shot to pieces, but if I can rake in more points, then I can win games. And that's the approach I've taken uh, with this tyranny force. It's been a good fun way to run, not just trying to think of the toughest units you can get, run them forwards and try and survive, but instead you know, go for more of a cunning approach. And that's proved tactically more fun and more dynamic just using these different units in different ways. So feel free to... Uh, copy this list. I think I didn't cover the Von Ryan's Leapers. They're 150 points coming in. In fact, I can just go through the points again for you just to give you this list. So 235 for the Hive Tyrant, 95 for his bodyguard. Uh, it's Termigants, 60 points per squad. New Tyrant, 105, 45 with his bodyguard. The Warriors, uh, 170, which I don't think I covered in the video. So 170 for the Warriors. Then you've got the Prime here, who's sitting at 65 points. And I've just gone through this list. I've triple-checked it. And the, <laughs> it's the Biovores that have messed up this list. They took a big points increase. Uh, and so what I've had to do... I'll carry on going here. But what I've had to do is drop one of the Biovores. So I've got two in this army. If you're going to go for 2,000 points, just for the updated points uh, from Games Workshop, shows the Biovores that really shot up in points cost. So dropping down to two of those. But wing, uh, the Wing Prime uh, is in. So then uh, the Von Ryan Sleepers, 150 points for those. 60 for Elicta, which I think is a great price. Just 70 for Death Leaper as well. Uh, then the Screamer Killers, 170 each with their Tyrannocyte drop pods, 105 each for those. 170 for the Mouse Scepter. And then finally the two artillery pieces at 75 points uh, each on the board. So that's the list here for the Tyrants. Copy this list entirely. Do let us know how you get on. Uh, with the way the points out work out as well, uh, I've had to change the enhancement on him. So you can drop adaptive biology. You would have 15 spare points, I believe, to take perfectly adapted, which lets you re-roll a single hit roll, wound roll, seven for a number of rolls, wound roll as well, uh, on him once per turn. So it's not too bad. You can take that on him for 15 points, which would take you to 2k precisely by my calculations. But points go up and down. It's one of the fluid things now uh, that happens more regularly in games or for Warhammer 40,000. So I can just keep an eye on the points if they go up, if they go down, you just, I can adjust this list a little bit each time. Uh, it shouldn't be too much problem uh, at all. So you can swap units around, reduce them in size and so on. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Future changes. I might just go to one artillery piece for the reasons explained in the Tactica video. That would free up 75 points. If I had dropped the adaption, that'd give me 90 points. I like more lictors would be an idea. Uh, Barb Gaunts is another option to provide a little bit of artillery support as well in a different form, just to be able to plaster a target with lots of lower powered shots coming through. So there's little tweaks and things uh, going on with this list here. But generally, the last games that I've played have been happy enough with how they performed. And they're starting to get themselves some tasty victories as well but uh, feel free to copy this list do let us know how you get on or if you want to take elements from this you can do that what units would you drop what units would you add let us know in the comments section below for discount 40k use the outpost it's a great way of saving uh, as you collect 
your 40k armies and beyond for your accessories and so on and then for bonus content for more content on the channel then do become a channel member join us at aspect warrior level and you can unlock all the bonus content including bad reports and you can join us on the army development video series keep a look out for more videos for this complete army series thanks for watching tune in next time